Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, upon popular request, we're gonna watch Yusuf Estes and his conversion story from darkness to light. Ever since I reacted to Yusuf Estes, you guys have been requesting this particular video. Guys, the video is over 40 minutes long, so this probably will be the longest reaction video ever. With no further ado, let's have a look. <laughs> My name is Yusuf Estes, and originally I'm from Texas. I live now in the Washington, D.C. area, and I came to Islam about 20 years ago because of something very special. 20 years Before ago, so I can only assume that at this stage the man is probably in his late 60s, maybe 70, so he came to Islam very late in his life. Before I came to Islam, I used to call people to Christianity. Okay. Everywhere I went, I would be carrying my Bible with me. I would have my salib or cross. And I even had a cap, a hat, that said Jesus, you know, Isa. Jesus is Lord. Mm. <laughs> Do you know, I didn't realize then how funny I must have looked. I didn't realize it. But in those days, I was very passionate. It's actually interesting. When I traveled to Australia, this is the first time that I saw missionaries and apologetics on the street. I've never seen anything like it in Europe. And even though I was a Christian, I couldn't help but feel cringe looking at those people. They were screaming and shouting on the street, Jesus is Lord. Very, very strange behavior. So I understand where he is coming from. About communicating the message that I felt people needed to know. A sure. message about love, a message about peace, mm. and a message about being a good person so that when the last day comes, the Yom al Akhar, that we'd be prepared for that. Absolutely. The daily life that I had before coming to Islam was filled with two things. Working hard to make just one thing guys. I have to interrupt it again because I'm really wondering where does this style come from? I've seen it in Macedonia with many elderly Albanian people. It is a classical Muslim outfit But on top you're wearing a suit jacket. This is so strange to me to this very day Please explain how this outfit came about the daily life that I had before coming to Islam was filled with two things Working hard to make business, make money, tijara. Tijara. And working hard to tell people about Jesus and the okay. message of peace. It surprised me to find out that in Islam, I could work more and communicate more. That's for sure. Before I met the person that helped me to know more about Islam, I used to have a very bad picture about Islam and Muslims. Same here, man. In fact, I was so afraid to even meet a Muslim that when my father told me we'd be doing business with a Muslim, I said, no, no way. No, these guys, Muslims, they are terrorists. They are hijackers. Mm. They are kidnappers. And they don't believe in God. In fact, they're worshiping a black box in the desert mm. and they kiss the ground five times a day. That was the way I understood Islam. Very interesting. I have parallels to the story. For me, Muslims didn't worship God either, let alone only one God. I thought that they are misguided by the devil. I believe that they disregard Jesus, that they have hate in their heart towards Jesus. And this is why they are violent people. They do not come with a message of peace. They have been deluded, misguided by the devil. This is how I saw it. A very bad opinion and a bad idea of how they treated women and how they treated children. I thought that really it was almost like they want to put everybody in prison. Mm. This was the idea that I had. Yeah. But then I had never really met a Muslim until we started doing business with a man from Egypt. 
When I first met this Egyptian gentleman, I was surprised because I was expecting to see some man wearing a long dress and Thank a you. black robe over it and a big turban or imama on his head mm -hmm. and he has one eyebrow goes all the way across <laughs> like this maybe carrying a sword you know a safe Hossam Probably. like this and maybe you know something like I have total Khomeini I don't know but then the funny. when I met this man I was so surprised he was wearing normal clothes and he looked as normal as anybody. He didn't even have a big beard. In fact, he didn't have any hair because he was even bald-headed. <laughs> he was nice, a really nice person. And I thought right away, hey, I bet I can convert him to become a Christian. That was my idea. I'll make him sure. become a Christian. But Allah had other plans. One of the things that really amazed me, you say in Arabic, ajib, ajiban, amazing, astonishing, was the way this man, although very quiet, gentle, kind, but what's amazing was the way that he, every day, he would do the salawat al khams. Every, every day, he would pray five times a day, on time. He would say, excuse me, I'll be right. This is something that I learned throughout my life with bodybuilding. Believe it or not, if you want to build anything of value, you will need specific timing. This is something I learned throughout my years training bodybuilding. If you don't have a meal plan and you eat every two hours religiously, you won't make the same results. If you do not follow a training plan and you execute those exercises according to plan, and you raise the weights. You go to the gym at the same time. You follow a plan to succeed. If you don't follow a plan to succeed, you are lost. Imagine yourself being a captain of a ship. If you don't follow a plan, you will crash. You don't know where your boat is going. And the same, of course, applies to religion. This is something that I came to realize just a few days ago because I caught myself not following a meal plan anymore. Nowadays, I eat more intuitively. But at the same time, like this, I'm not progressing one way or the other. Do I want to cut weight? Do I want to gain weight? And all of a sudden it hit me and I realized, wow, those five prayers with their according times make all the sense in the world. They are a guidance. Without them, you are lost. As a Christian, when should I pray? I don't know. Before going to bed, maybe. The Bible says pray without ceasing. But what does that mean? Should I pray all day? How do I pray? Etc. Etc. Within Islam, you have a clear structure. Right back. He would go and make wudu. Then, Allah Do his salah, some dhikr, dua, and come back to us and start working again. Every day, except one day a week. Yawmul Juma, he stops everything. He said, I will be back in two hours. He would get ready and drive to the masjid do his salah there and come back and it took almost a half hour almost a half hour just to get there mm -hmm. so that's why he had to take two hours off but he would still come back and go right back to work again so the man would work seven days a week but he would stop for his worship another thing that he did he liked to fast some on mondays and also on Thursdays. And you would go to him and say, would you like this? You want some of this? So and so. He'd say, no, no, it's okay. I'm fasting. One amazing thing about him that even my father talked about was how honest he was in business. Anytime there was any business transaction whatsoever, he always made sure the customer got full value for whatever it was they were doing and to be sure that they got the product that they were promised and then the follow-up to be sure that they were happy. 
that was another thing that we really were amazed about. You know, I thought, if we make this man a Christian, we could make him a saint. Maybe <laughs> he will be even better. an angel. <laughs> because he's so sweet, so yeah, nice. I thought like that too. <laughs> but do you know what happened? One day, while I was trying to convert him, he asked us about the Bible. Hmm. And so I said, yes, I have a Catholic priest who will come to my house. I was a Protestant. This is two different religions. Okay. And my father would be there with his... Within Protestantism, you don't have any depictions. You don't have any idols, any statues. So therefore, you already had a different perception of Christianity in comparison to myself here. I come from Orthodox Christianity and we have the whole deal. We have the golden chandeliers. We have the icons everywhere, depictions, crosses and what not. Bible. So I have my Bible. My father has a different Bible. The Catholic has another Bible. And we'll sit there and try to talk to him about all this. But then we began saying, which Bible, which Bible, you know, between us. All the time, the Muslim, he's sitting there, quiet. So we ask him, well, how many versions, you know? It's interesting to see here, however, that Yusuf Estes has a lot of Arabic mannerism. So I do understand the critique of the West. When they look at Islam, they see it as an Arabic religion. Now looking at this man, he seems foreign to the Americans, especially because of his use of words. He uses a lot of Arabic words. He gestures a certain way. I know Arabs myself, and he seems more Arab than American. It's quite interesting to see what kind of influence the religion has on the man. What Quran do you have? Still one. Just one. And it's still in Arabic. The way it came, it's perfect. Nothing's missing. No words are missing. No pages are missing. Not even a dot is missing. Hmm. So then we had another idea. Let's talk to him about God. Hmm. But when we start to talk about God, he said, can you explain Trinity? Well, we try to explain how three could be one. We get many examples, but none of them really hold up very good. Do you know that when we ask him, what do you guys say about God? He said, well, it's pretty simple. And he said what Allah said in the Quran, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitani Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rajeem Qul Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad Lam Yulid and do you know his argument was so strong we just sat there like this no expression imagine what a beautiful meaning this has when somebody knows when they really know Allah he is Ahad unique one no partners and he takes care of everything and he has no father he has no sons, he has no relatives, no daughters, no cousins, no uncles. Nothing. And he is not like anything. He is a had unique. Amazing. Many people ask me, Very how amazing. did you feel about being a Christian? What was it like to be a Christian? Did you ever have any doubts about Christianity? Well, actually, at one point in my life, I was so involved in Christianity, believing in it, that I thought it was everything until I began to find mistakes in the Bible. Same here, man. If you ask me how it was to be a Christian during the time where I was 100% convinced, it was absolutely beautiful. I went to Mount Athos, visited the monasteries, spent time with the priests, with the monks. I was deeply involved with Christian orthodoxy and I absolutely loved it. It seemed to me like the absolute truth. This is why I am so careful now when it comes down to Islam, because I do not want to accept it as the ultimate truth, just to then, a couple of years later, find it to be flawed. With Christian orthodoxy, I felt at peace. I fell in love with the faith. I felt at home. I saw that my life had purpose. Everything seemed to click. Why we have evil in the world, why we have those powers that try to enslave us, chip us, force some injections onto us, and what not. It all made sense from an orthodox worldview. Once I started seeing that there are flaws within orthodoxy, 
my whole worldview crumbled. It's an absolutely agonizing state to be in once that fabric starts falling apart. And this is why I cannot simply say I'm going to accept Islam now. And then just a few years later, I'm going to say, wow, the fabric is crumbling yet again. I do not want to put myself into that state again. This is why I'm learning first. Serious mistakes in the Bible. And then it made me begin to doubt. Not doubt about God, no. No, But to never. doubt about the Bible. And what about Christianity? Some of the things that we think about when we talk about this subject is, why is it called Christianity? Sure. Because if it's called Christianity, it means you have to follow Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But what about all the people before that? Yeah, that's the they issue. They couldn't have known about him because he wasn't here. What about Adam, Abraham, Moses, David, Suleiman, all the prophets? And then what about Jesus himself? Did he say, I'm a Christian? No. Actually, I found in the Bible, it says that they were never called Christians until they took their message to Antioch long, long after Jesus was gone, long after Paul came into the religion yes. and started changing things. Even then, he said, we were never called Christians until after Antioch. Absolutely correct. And this is what made my faith crumble even further because I realized if Jesus really built the church and this is the Orthodox claim, would he build a church with depictions of him within the church? Would he build a church with him crucified in the church? I mean, after all, if Jesus built the church, he built it before the crucifixion. How would that even make sense? Would Jesus call himself a Christian? Would his followers be Christians? Of course not. It doesn't make any sense. Then I started thinking, if the name is not right, the book has some mistakes. I don't know. But when I looked at other options, other religions, I wasn't very impressed. I really wasn't. Mm. And I had not really heard anything about Islam. And I never met any Muslims. I have to say I was pretty impressed with Buddhism at the time and shamanism, which is not a religion. Not until my Egyptian friend. But then I began to observe some things that really made me see a beautiful connection. One of the things that my Egyptian friend told me is that we Muslims believe in Jesus. Yeah, shocking, I, said, what? I know. Because I know Jewish, you know the Yahudi. They reject. They believe in <laughs> you know Adam, and Abraham, and Isaac, Ishaq, Ismail, Ishmael. They believe in Suleiman and David and all these prophets. They believe in the Old Testament, but they do not believe in Jesus. Not yeah. as a prophet, not the as opposite. the son of a god, not as a miracle worker, nothing. Zero. As a charlatan, so as a magician how maybe. how could a Muslim believe in Jesus? And he said, yes, we call him Isa. I said, okay, that's all right. It's similar to Jewish, Yeshua, Isa, Yeshua. Okay. He said, and do you know what? We know he's a miracle birth. Oh, mm -hmm. the Immaculate Conception. Mu'ajiza from Allah. So, okay. And we know that he did miracles. Even when he was born, he could speak. Isa, alayhi salam, he could speak when he was born. And he told the people he was a prophet. And he had a mission. I was like, really? I don't know that. And he did miracles. People that had skin disease, they were cured. People who couldn't walk, lame, they were cured. Mm -hmm. People that were blind, and they were cured. Even a dead man was brought back to life. This is why Christians believe that Jesus is God, because only God can bring back the dead. He is in the Bible, Lazarus, but you're telling me a Muslim believes this? Huh? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. It was shocking to me too. I said, okay, well, what do you believe about Jesus? We say he's the son of God. What do you say? He said, we say he's the son of Mary. Oh yeah, that makes sense. He is the son of Mary. He said, this way we don't have to try to resolve the issue of son of God.
ibn Allah, a'udhu billah, astaghfirullah. Allah has a son, a'udhu billah. So this is where it really... Mary is his mother, of course. This is why they call her Mother Mary. But who is the father? If Joseph is not the father, who is the father? From our human perspective, there needs to be a father. And therefore, Christians believe that God fathered Jesus through the Holy Spirit. This is how he created him. Because he didn't just say, and it was like in the case of Adam. Many Muslims compare Jesus to Adam and they say, hey, this was miraculous as well. Sure, but God simply created Adam as the first human being. He wasn't birthed. And Jesus, on the other hand, if God wanted it to be, he would have created him just like that. However, he birthed him, in a sense, through Mary. She is the mother after all. And this is why, as Christians, we believe that God, by default, must be the father. It's making you think. Muslims do believe so much, almost, you know, it's almost, almost exactly, almost, almost, but maybe a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Because when we came to the subject of Son of God, he said, no, Son of Mary, yes, Mu'ajizah, yes, even the Kalamatullah, the Word of God, the Locals. Even that, yes. When Allah but this is something that I do not understand. Jesus is the word of God, but at the same time, the Quran is the word of God. So please explain in the comment section what is meant by that. I really don't understand. Anything, he just says, kun fayakun. Be, and it is. And that's how he created Jesus. And I thought, oh, it's in the Bible. The Kitab al-Maqdis, it's what it says. But yet again, as I just said, kun faya kun, be and it is, this is what he did with Adam. With Jesus, on the other hand, it wasn't that Jesus just appeared like so. He was birthed indeed through Mary. So please explain what is meant by that as well in the comment section, guys. Be and it is. And that's how he made him. So, Miriam is the mother. God is the creator. Exactly what my Muslim friend told me. I thought, oh, if this is the case, what else do you believe? He said, we believe he's not dead. He's with Allah and he will come in the last day. Oh my God. He said, this man is going to be easy. I can convert him right now. <laughs> this is almost the there. same thing. But then it happened. The big event happened. The Catholic priest friend of mine said, I want to go to the mosque. I want to see what do they do? And he went to the mosque. When he came back, we said, come here. What are they doing there? <laughs> do they like, you know, slaughter animals? <laughs> That's you know, what they do. <laughs> or do they make uh, bombs, something? Probably. Both. He said, no. He said, they line up, stuff, then, they stand like this. He said, like a monk or priest when they worship in silence. That Sinai. is correct. He yes. said they were silent, stood. Yes. Like I this. saw that in the monasteries, it's true. Really? He said, then they bow. Rukua. Then sajda. Then sitting, silent. Not talking to each other, nothing. Silent. The whole time until. Salam alaikum rahmatullah. Salam alaikum rahmatullah. I said, then? He said, they left. I said, what kind of music did they have? He said, they don't have any music. I said, what? How do you worship God with no music? I was a music minister. I'm wondering, mm. how? No music? Very said, interesting. No. Within the Orthodox Church, we don't have music per se. We have the Holy Liturgy. So it is the monks and the priests. No more about this. Well, I did. I learned a lot more about it. Do you know what happened next? It came my turn. I became very curious. Yep, so I began I asking understand. some hard questions to the Muslim. What do you say about this? What about so and so? I heard Muslims, you know, they do so and such. And every time I ask him a question, he smile, and he would tell me so many nice things. 
And I would There's think, always an answer. Huh. In Islam, you have an answer this is to not everything. That's the image I had in my mind. In fact, when I think about Isa, alayhi salam, what was his character like? How did he act? How did he treat people? How? And I said to myself, this man, this Muslim, is acting more like Jesus than the Christians. Sure. He never drinks alcohol. Mm. He never smokes cigarettes. He never lies. He never cheats. He doesn't chase the women, if you know what I mean. No. In fact, when ladies come close, he puts his eyes down. I said, if Jesus was here, السلام, this is what he would do. He would be like this man. The human being is a very flawed creature on purpose. And because we are so flawed, we need firm guidelines so we can follow them. If we don't, then you open up the room for interpretation and everybody can tell you what they think is right. But ultimately, there is no true guideline. If you look into the Bible, there are many things that point towards the behavior that the Muslims have nowadays. You see in the Bible that you should be covered. And moreover, you do see a well that you shouldn't practice usury but as you can see worldwide everybody is following the money and everybody is practicing usury within islam it is forbidden and this is ultimately what i came to realize at first i heard about bad evil sharia and seems so strict and so foreign to us but ultimately if you study your own books you look into the bible you will find out that the sharia is not much different if at all leviticus is much harsher than any sharia law could ever be and now you count one and one together and you realize that jesus was a law abiding jew by that standard only the Muslims can behave like Jesus. It's true. I still wondered how can I get him to be a Christian? It was still in my mind. How can I get him to be a Christian? Sure. But all along I was wishing I could be more like this man mm. because he was at peace inside. That's what we're looking for. No matter what happened. If we have a flat tire on the road he's at peace with it. It's alhamdulillah qadr Allah. I don't know what he meant. Mm. He said qadr Allah mashallah. I don't know what it meant. But he would say that and he would smile. If we ran out of gasoline, no fuel, alhamdulillah, qadr Allah. If I didn't have the money to pay for something, qadr Allah, mashallah. No matter what happened, he was okay. Mm. I'm wondering how? How can this man be in such peace? Because it's time? God's will. I wish I would be like that. You know, when I think about my friend, the Muslim, I almost laugh now to remember how patient he was with me because I would be telling him, you know, this and so and so and come on and be a Christian. <laughs> and he would smile. Finally, one day, he said to me, you know, I will go to your religion if your religion is better than my religion. But you need proof. Fair proof? Well, we know in Islam that dalil is something very important. If somebody tells you anything, ana dalil yahi, right? But never in Christianity anybody said this to me. What is your proof? Proof? I even said to him, proof? Religion is not about proof. It's about faith. faith All alone. about faith. No proof. Yes. He said in Islam, we have both. We have faith, but we have proof. Mm. And when he said that, it came in my mind. And I said to him, do you mean to sit there and tell me, as a Muslim, you can prove there's God? Then he said to me, do you mean to sit there as a preacher? for Christians and you can't? Fair question. Uh, uh, <laughs> now what could I say? Because I want to know what's his proof. 
because I never thought about proof for anything. Mm -hmm. Just you hear somebody say it, you believe it. And they said, in the Bible, it says so and so. If you look and read and read, you never find it. Where does it say it? He said it, okay, I believe it. Right. No, in Islam, every single word you must be able to prove or you don't say it. Mm. Allah said, Kala Allah wa Kala Rasul. This is the haq of Islam. Kala Allah, the Quran, wa Kala Rasul, the Hadith, Sahih Hadith, Bukhari, Muslim. And when he would explain, my Muslim friend, he would explain Islam to me, he would tell me, in Quran, Allah said, and he would say the Arabiya. I don't know Arabic. Zero, no Arabic. In those days, I didn't know one word. Not even Salaam Alaikum. Nothing. But he would still recite the Quran in Arabic. And then he would say, more or less, the English could be like this. Mm -hmm. And he would tell me. And he would say, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Huakala, he said, for instance, Khairukum manta alama al Quran wa alama. And this in English, he would say, would mean the best of you are those who learn, learn the Quran. Mm -hmm. And then you teach the Quran. So he would give me the Arabic, he would give me the English. Sometimes, listen to this, sometimes. He would recite the Quran quickly. Quickly. Like for instance, he might say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, call who Allahu ahad Allahu sama. I'd say, no, 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 stop. He said, why? I said, go slow. He said, why? I said, I like to listen to it. He said, but you don't know it. I said, but I like it. And sometime when he would recite, I would feel like I want to cry. I don't know why. Like when he would recite, A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim. Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyu qayyum la ta'khudhu sinatun wala naum lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard man dhaladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idni yalamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khafum wallahi yuhituna bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bi mishah Wasi a kursi yuhusama wati wal ard. Wala ya uluhu hifta huma wa huwala liyula. When he got to this part, when he said wasi a kursi yuhusama wati wal ard, I think that's why I told him, no, no, oh, slow, slow, what is this? What is this? And he explained about the kursi of Allah, the arsh of Allah. So much details. And I'm thinking, oh, this man knows more about his religion as a geologist than I do as a preacher. Mm -hmm. How yeah, come? it's quite interesting. In different denominations, aside from orthodoxy, I've seen people become preachers, especially in the States, with I don't even know what. I don't know what kind of schooling they get. I don't know what kind of certificate they get printed out of the internet or something. But all of a sudden, they are preachers. You see the ABCD folks all of a sudden being preachers as well. There is no proper schooling for those dominations. The preachers of Christianity don't know about Christianity Not as much as some Muslims. Some Muslims know more about Christianity than sure. some of the Christian preachers. For sure. And especially, how come nobody knows about Islam in the West? Nobody. Mm -hmm. We're not being told, Yet it's man. the most beautiful, logical way to explain the haq, the proof, la ilaha illallah. When you look to the mountains, you look to the oceans, you look to the stars, the moon, the sun, and you realize this cannot come by an accident. This has to be from somewhere. Where did you come from? Where did you get your brains? Who takes care of you every day? Who wakes you up? Who lets you go to sleep? Who gave you life? Who replaces the skin when you get hurt? Who is doing this? Biology, evolution. Anybody could say God does it. But not anybody has the proof of the Quran and the Sunnah. 
which clearly shows these proofs again and again. Every ayah of Quran showing these proofs. So look at the combination. We have a man living the example with the akhlaq. He has the behavior, the characteristic of Islam, and he has the basic knowledge. The simple knowledge of what? What are the five pillars of Islam? Shahada, Salah, Saum Ramadan, Zakat al and Hajj fil Allah. Explain that. That's all he did. He just explained the basics. And what do we believe? Aman Billah. We believe in Allah. Wumalayakatihi and the angels. Wakatubihi and the books. All the books all the way back. From the beginning until now. Of all of the prophets. Warasulahi. All of the prophets. And we make no separation between any of those. And we believe in the day of resurrection. Yamun Kiyama. The day of standing. Literally in Arabic, the day of standing. And he explained this. Very simple. We're all going to be brought back. Everybody. I said, wait. Just Muslims, right? He said, no. Everybody. Everybody is coming back. I said, what? All the Muslims. All the Christians. All the Yahudi. All of the Buddhists. All of the Hindus. All the Mulhid. All the people will be brought back on the Yom Kiyama. The sixth point in Islam, he told us, is the Qadr of Allah. Now in this case, I could actually see somebody accepting the Qadr of Allah. But how do you explain that to somebody? It means that Allah has already predestined everything. It's already known to Allah what's going to happen, and it's in His control. Right. Now some people might say, well, how is that fair? I mean, if Allah made me do it, why would I get a reward or a punishment? Mm. It's not my fault. But in Islam, he explained it to me clearly. In Islam, we know that everything is a result of our intention, the niya. And then he said, Kala Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, Innama amalu bin niyat, that everything is by your intention. But then whatever comes from Allah, this is Allah's cutter. And that's when you can live as a Muslim. And I said, how? And look what he said. He said, you have to know what's Islam. And he explained in a way that I understood. Later I took a dictionary and found the words in Arabic. That it's Islam. To surrender. To give up. And to submit. And to obey. And to be sincere. Well, wait a minute. If you're going to be sincere, this means what? You cannot force anybody to be sincere. It's impossible. If you force them, they're not sincere. True. And this is required in Islam. So never did Islam spread by the sword. And Islam doesn't spread with a gun. Islam spreads with the heart. And this man touched our hearts with his behavior, with his kindness, with his generosity, with his good advice that he gave all of us. But especially the way that he was so devoted to his God. When he would stand over in the corner of the house and we would see him praying and he would look up like this and you would see tears in his eyes and you would wonder what is he crying for? I later came to know that he was crying for us. He was asking Allah, Ya Allah, Ya Latif, Ya Hadi, Ya Hadi, Ya Hadi. The one who guides, guide these people, guide these people. They're nice people. Oh, Allah, guide them. And tears coming down his face. Allah. Do you know? He said to me the key words. He said to me, I will go to your religion as a Christian. If your religion is better than my religion. I said, yeah. okay. Hey, we got him now. Because... In Christianity, I know you don't have to pray, you don't have to fast, you don't have to make hajj, you don't have to pay zakah, you don't even have to be nice if you don't want to. You just believe Jesus died for your sins. Yay! 
Yeah, that is Protestantism, of course. Within Orthodoxy, you do have to fast. We have the Lent fast, for example. You will find many pilgrimages within Orthodoxy as well. However, no, you are correct. They are not mandatory and neither is Zakat. You should give to charity, of course. That would be a nice gesture, but there is no fixed law. Many people appreciate that it is so loose and many people appreciate that it appears to be their own decision. They do not want to be told what to do, but yet again, Again, I make the argument that people unfortunately are flawed and they do need guidelines. And if they don't follow the laws of God, they will follow anything else. He said, no. I mean, I will be in your religion if your religion is better, sure. but you need proof. I said, again with the proof. He said, yes, because there's nothing we do in Islam except we know there's a proof. Whether we know the reason or not, that's another subject. Why we don't eat pork, why women should cover themselves up, why men don't go out here touching other women, and why we must never cheat or must never lie. The reasons are with Allah, but we know the proof is from the Quran and the Sunnah. This is what we live by. And again, no matter what happened, he would say the same thing. Qadr Allah, mashallah. I realized he was right. I didn't have any proof. I was just talking. But then, one night when I was really thinking about Islam so much, I found that the Catholic priest accepted Islam. The Catholic wow. priest became Muslim. A shadow of Allah, 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 Allah. That's crazy. I couldn't believe it. Of I started to tell my wife. Then I found that she also is interested to be a Muslim. What? I'm shocked. <laughs> So I wanted to talk to him again, one more time. So we were walking around in the night outside our house. I asked him about something about my business, my family, the people I know, congregation I used to go with, the Bible, the Quran. That Muslim flipped their world on its head. The Bible, the Quran, many questions, many questions, many questions, because I didn't know what to do. I wanted him to tell me, why don't you be a Muslim? I wanted him to say that, why don't you be a Muslim? But look at the hikmah. Look at the wisdom. He said, this is not about you and me. This is not about you and your wife or you and your father or you and the congregation of your people. It, this is about you and him. So you need to talk to him. Now look at this man. He's crying, oh Allah, guide them. But he doesn't say, I want you to be guided by me. No. He let Allah do what Allah does. And he cried for us. He went Powerful. and prayed. And while he was praying, I went and put my head on the ground. And I said, God, if you're there, guide me. And when I raised up my head, I knew. I knew there really is God. He's one. La sharika Allah. He has no partners. And I knew Muhammad وسلم, is his last, his final messenger. And I have to follow it. I have to follow it. There's no option. There's no other way. There's deen or not. All right, guys, and this is it. We're going to cut it off here long enough as it is the longest reaction video on this channel. I am certain an absolutely mind blowing story. Of course, in this context, it made sense that this Muslim man appeared to him and changed his life completely. Of course, ultimately, it boils down to God changing his life. But nevertheless, I believe God sends people to us. And this man surely was sent to to Yusuf Estes here for him to shift his perspective. What is even more impressive, of course, is that he wasn't just a layman, he was a Christian preacher, just as the Catholic priest there who converted to Islam as well. An absolutely amazing story. I'm looking forward to react to more Yusuf Estes videos. Guys, if you want me to continue to react to Yusuf Estes, let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so and if you want to support this channel via patreon all the links are in the description box below
lol. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.